put his troops into eastern Ukraine. Let me stress it again. Ukraine is not just a neighbouring country. It's an integral part of our history, culture, spiritual continuum. As the rest of the world decides how to respond. That an attack on Ukraine is an attack on the sovereignty of every UN member state. It will be met with swift and severe consequences. With an estimated 190,000 troops gathered on the border, there are fears a full-scale invasion could follow. Dear citizens of Russia, dear friends, the topic of my speech is the events in Ukraine and why it is so important for us, for Russia. After a lengthy speech, Putin signed a decree and his objective became clearer. The document says that Russia will officially recognise the independence of rebel-held Donetsk and Luhansk, which comprise the Donbass region. Fighting first broke out in Donbass in 2014, when Russian-backed rebels seized government buildings. Fierce fighting followed. More than 13,000 people have died in the conflict. The situation in Donbass has become critical, acute again, and blackmailed by threats to face new sanctions and the ground for sanctions will be found or just fabricated. This is plainly in breach of international law. We are definitely seeing the precursors to an invasion. Nick Dole in the Ukrainian capital. The Russian president convened top officials in a carefully staged forum at the Kremlin. There was no dissenting opinion. I consider it necessary to take a long overdue decision to immediately recognize the independence and sovereignty of Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic. Referring to the government in Kyiv as those who took over, the Russian president demanded Ukraine call off combat operations in Donbass. Otherwise, the responsibility for continuing the bloodshed will lay on the shoulders of the Ukrainian regime. In recent days, the fighting in eastern Ukraine has gotten worse. Ukraine says the rebels have been trying to provoke a reaction to justify an invasion. The Russian president has ordered so-called peacekeeping forces to enter the region, Moscow says it now has the right to build military bases on Ukrainian soil after signing new treaties with the separatist leaders. But the government in Kyiv says it won't give up any territory and it expects support from the West. We are not afraid of anybody or anything. We owe nothing to no one and we will not give anything to anyone. The international community was swift with its condemnation of Russia's actions. The Secretary General considers the decision of the Russian Federation to be a violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine. This is plainly in breach of international law. The US has warned Kyiv could come under attack if Russia invades. While many people in the capital know of bomb shelters or country houses they can escape to, Jawid and his family have no such plans. The interpreter fled Afghanistan only to get stuck in another potential conflict zone while waiting for a Canadian visa. They have no local contacts, they don't speak the language and have very little money. I don't know what to do finally. No. Meanwhile, it's about to start a war in, Afga in Ukraine too, as I follow the news every day and just word that what will we do now? Because I ran from one war and now I'm involved in another one. A reminder that what happens next in this crisis could affect the future of millions. Nick Dole, ABC News, Kiev. And Nick Dole joins me now from Kiev. Nick, what's been the reaction there to Russia's announcement? Are, are people alarmed? Hi, Juanita. I think there is a sense of concern here, but uh, not panic because many Ukrainians say they predicted this kind of strategy from Vladimir Putin. They say they've seen this kind of thing before. If anything, there's a sense of defiance here because President Putin really attacked the very notion of Ukrainian statehood in his speech. Uh, 
portraying it as weak, feeble, corrupt and in need of Russian guidance. Well, many people here say they want to put the Soviet past behind them, but they don't think Vladimir Putin can let it go. And in that sense, it is unpredictable here because it's so personal to the Russian president. While it might not seem rational to advance any further into Ukraine or even come for the capital, Kiev, there is a concern that rationality may have gone out the window. So what's the Ukrainian government's strategy now? The Ukrainian government says it won't be giving an inch, no territory at all. We've already seen uh, some more military resources heading to the east of the country. The president here, Volodymyr Zelensky, says now is the time that his country will discover who its real friends are versus the countries that simply want to scare Russia through words, as he puts it. In other words, he wants more military support and sanctions that actually bite. Juanita. Nick Dole reporting there. The Russian president's speech has revealed just how deeply divided Moscow and the West are, not just on Ukraine, but more broadly on security in Europe. Europe correspondent Steve Kinane joins me now from London. Steve, how will European leaders respond to this crisis? Well, Juanita, we know that the UK Prime Minister and his, his ministers are meeting this morning um, and they're discussing that issue of sanctions uh, and um, uh, sanctions against Russia and when to introduce them. We expect that they will hold back some of the broader, uh, tougher sanctions. They will do that because they want to have some deterrent up their sleeve to uh, prevent a full-scale invasion. Now, as far as the EU goes, we've already heard from the EU leaders they're vowing to introduce sanctions, once again to target the decision-makers. In, in a statement that they released, they said the union will react with sanctions against those involved in this illegal act. Now, it's harder to get agreement with the EU, of course. There's 27 countries. Some of those countries are more reliant on Russian gas for cheap energy than others. But we will find out in the coming hours how tough and how targeted those sanctions will be. Steve Kinane speaking to us there from London. The Morrison government says it'll be in lockstep with its allies when they decide to introduce those sanctions. The Prime Minister has called Russia's threats unacceptable, unprovoked and unwarranted. Here's political editor Andrew Probin. Russian troops poised to deliver their president's decree. Vladimir Putin claims their dispatch into eastern Ukraine is for peacekeeping. The rest of the world sees it otherwise. An attack on Ukraine is an attack on the sovereignty of every UN member state. It's unacceptable, it's unprovoked, it's unwarranted. Australia joining international condemnation of Russia's aggression amid deep concern over what it might mean for the people of Ukraine. Absolutely violent confrontation with terrible human consequences. We call upon Russia to back off. Australia and allies are determining whether President Putin's so-called peacekeeping mission constitutes a military invasion although Kiev is in no doubt. We need a strong political condemnation. We need sanctions as soon as possible. If Russia is hit with sanctions, it will be coordinated. The National Security Committee of Cabinet is believed to have Australian penalties ready once the US and the UK act. The moment that, uh, that other countries um, put in place strong and severe sanctions, we will be in lockstep with them. Significant sanctions already exist against Russia, dating back to the downing of flight MH17 in Ukraine that killed all on board, including 38 Australians. I'm going to uh, shirt front, Mr Putin. Uh, you bet you are. Uh, you bet I am. Tony Abbott's government slapped travel bans on certain individuals and suspended some financial and trade ties, including a uranium supply agreement reached between President Putin and John Howard 15 years ago. Australians in Ukraine were advised to leave the country weeks ago, and there's talk that some Ukrainians forced to flee could be offered safe haven in Australia. But the biggest question out of all of this is whether the United States and the West really have the stomach to stand up to Vladimir Putin, because another autocrat in Beijing, who also has territorial ambitions, is hanging on the answer. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Canberra.